So what I'm going to do is click File. I'm just going to move this screen recorder out of the way. So I'm going to click File. And I'm going to click Import Media. So if I'm going to import some media here, I'll move this one out of the way too. There's different things I could show you. Here I've actually just got the, tutor the tutorials. That's the word. Tutorials I've been making, which is probably not the most interesting one to look at. So I'm just going to go onto this folder I made, which was the desktop prior to when I cleaned it up so it would look nice and neat for you. Uh, you're welcome, by the way. And I'm just going to take a look at, say, this one right here. Simply just says Cahoots Creation Studio. This is an image. It's a JPEG. I'm just going to open up this JPEG. So as you can see here, it's come under pictures, which is good. So if I want to actually use this, I can now say, go to scene two, let's start name. And in scene two, we only have the one projector. So we can just do this again. We'll call it the projector. And in this case, what I'm gonna use is a picture player. Now the picture player is gonna pick from any of the various pictures we could have here. Right now I only have one. So let's start with one. I'll show you how that works a little bit after. So simple as it was before, we're gonna connect the video to the video. Of course, there's no picture selected, so I'm picture zero. But if I just go to picture one, you can see now the Hoots Grace Studio is right there. And uh, I'm gonna put it on the stage two. So there we go. I can, of course, change the aspect of this, change the zoom so I can zoom out a bit. And I can make it wider just to help a little bit. Actually, it says maximum width, which is a shame, but I could also just do it that way, make it disappear. Anyway, in this case, I'd have to actually work with the file to make the file a bit wider, if that would be what I wanted to do. So here, I've gone on stage two, Goose Creation Studio, stage one, me. So in this case, what you could be doing is having this live stream projection, which is the video in watcher here. And then simultaneously, you can have the picture player with something behind me. And we, can, like I said before, we will take a look at in the creation studio to take a look at how this can come together. For now, this is generally how you work. Now, you might not want a picture. Uh, so here I'm going to import some other media. So I'm going to go in. And in this case, I'm going to import something else. Let's say um, a song. Why not import a song? So this is an M4A I'm importing here. I can't properly pronounce the title of this M4A, but as you can see, it's actually come into the video files. Now this often will happen with audio files. They actually won't come in as the audio file you wish they were. And you can try your best to drag them. It's just not gonna work. There are some audio files that will work. There are some audio files that don't, and there's different advantages. So in this case, I'm going to make a new scene now. Uh, so we're going to say file and, uh, oh, sorry, scenes, insert a scene. We now have a new scene. We're going to rename it scene three. And what do we want to happen here? Uh, let me just quickly bring myself back in here. So here, copy. Paste. As you can see, I'm copying the video in Watcher, which is the live stream. Scene three. Paste. I'm back. So now we actually want to work with this file. So the thing is, we could just hook it up to projector. Let's see what happens when we do that. So we have projector, and we have, in this case, a movie player. Now, if we select 
will be number one. We can hear it starting to work. I'm just going to bring the volume down. Now already, it's working, right? We know it's working. We can hear it work. So if you just want to play music, sometimes this will be all you need to do. If I were to connect this video to here, as you can see, nothing is happening because there is no video that goes along with it. So ultimately, the projector is not really what we need. Here we've got a bit of an issue, though. Because if I go to scene two, nothing. Well, we got our Creation Studio tag there, and you've got me over here. But if we go to scene three, we're back. So this will start the song as soon as we go in. You might not want that to happen. You might want it to actually be cued. So if you want that to happen, you'll go back in here, and we'll go in to its general settings. Now, we've got a great thing where it's set to start at zero. It's very handy. Um, that means at least we won't be coming into the middle of the song every time. But we can always check those things. So the first thing I'm going to do here is click on the text. So when I click on the text here, I can then say, Play start, initialize at zero. The best practice is to always click where you want it to start. Now I could say initialize 50% through, and it would switch to that. But here I'm just gonna go with zero. So whenever I start, it's gonna come in at zero. Now, volume is set to 14. It will generally be fine, but should you want to, you can set an initialization point for the volume too. Same with pan, same with frequency, all of these things. Same with speed. Speed's a fun thing you can actually adjust here. Keeping in mind that since everything works with percentages in Isadora, this is 20% slower. This is not playing at all. This is at 40%, 60%, this is at speed. And actually the percentage I had the first time there would have been at a different percentage, but I'm not necessarily that skilled with math. So these are the things that we've got to work with. But what we wanted to do is to have a way that when we go to this scene, it's not yet playing. So, one of the easiest ways to do that is we can work with visibility on or visibility off. On, off. Now, we can easily do it so that I just go click here and then I go in and then I turn it on. Not the most practical way to get things started. So, what we're gonna do is build a little keyboard watcher. So for now, I'm actually just going to turn this off. And we're going to use a keyboard watcher. So what we want to do is pull up this little keyboard watcher here. The way the keyboard watcher works is it allows you to assign any key to do any function you really want. It also lets you choose if you want to make it action when you, uh, make the action happen when you press down on the key, when you release the key. It's up to you to define how you want that to work. It really depends on how you want to run your show uh, or how you want to assign someone to run your show. Some cues you might want that to be a little bit more specific. Um, depends on how you've got it programmed. For flashing cues, for example, I find that the downstroke seems to make the most sense. Generally, the downstroke makes the most sense, but there could be a time when you need to actually press down and wait on something to happen on stage and just know that you can just release because you've got another cue coming, however you want to do it. So right now, it's set up with a default of A. Right now, let's just go with A. We can obviously just double-click here and change the value whenever we like. Now, when you're changing the value, though, just make sure that you press this... Uh, apostrophe here, 
whatever you want it to be. It's just going to be in these single quotes. It could be F, for example, but let's keep it as A. Now, we want this to trigger the visibility. We want that to trigger that it starts. So if I click A now, what happens? Nothing. Because it doesn't actually understand, the program doesn't actually understand what I'm telling it to do. So what we have to do, we'll just remove this. Either just, ah, clear. So what we want to do is give a trigger value. What we're doing here is triggering a function. Um, so we want to actually trigger the function of visibility in this case, which is an off on value. So we're just going to type in trigger value. Now, this is going to tell me that when I press A, something's going to be triggered. So you see uh, here, this little X that keeps coming up. That's happening every time I press the A button. So every time I do this, something's going to happen. Now, the value is right now set to zero. And zero, you'll see when we connect it, gives us off. The connection is going from this point to this point, the X, from this point to this point. Now, because Isadora is mainly working with percentage values, that means that we can just change this value to 100, which would be the opposite of zero in this case. And once we press it, the right button this time, it turns on. Just like that, you've got a little trigger effect for Isadora. This will be really useful if you want to have multiple effects happening at different times. So let's take it to another level here. I'm just going to turn it off. I'm going to bring in another file. You got the touch. You got the power. Yeah. If this file here. This could be interesting too because it's actually going to be beyond being a really big file here. It's in a waveform. So it's a different media altogether. So let's see how this comes in. As you can see, this one comes into audio files. Waveforms generally will go into audio files. MP3 sometimes can go in either. Depends on how you want to work with it. But what that means is that if we go back here to the movie player, and I try to go find that audio file, it doesn't exist. It doesn't see it as a movie. It sees it as an audio file. So, what we do know is that we don't need to play this movie because it's not a movie. So instead, we're going to find our audio player. So, audio file player. So you can see it's now set on zero. We now set it on one. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. So right there, we've actually just got it working now. As you can see, there was an issue with my programming there, which I had to correct. Uh, and that was that I had an audio file player going, but I actually didn't have any output. So I had to tell it to actually play. So I needed to bring in the output, the audio device output. Now, this file here is actually just a recording of uh, a rehearsal we had going on. So I'm not going to play too much of it. But what I will do is repeat the process of the keyboard watcher. So actually I can just copy and paste this, that's fine. See here I'm actually just copying the two actors I would like. And I'm just going to paste. I've got another copy of them here. And we're going to work with it being on active or not.
So, we got the file here. Yeah. Let's just, for fun, skip a little bit further ahead in the recording. Maybe there'll be some music. So we're going to go to 40. Or so, say 42. So now once I turn this on, we've got this music playing. Of course, we want to do a similar thing to what we did here, and actually the values will be the same, 100 to 100. So right now, if I connect here to the active point, as soon as I hit A, both these files are going to start off. So here we go. A. Uh, so, um, it, like Huron, uh, the, the I'm just going to... If you listen very carefully, you can hear the other one going on there. But I'm going to stop both of them. So you can see both files are playing. Uh, you can always check to see if your file is actually active by looking down in this area. I'm going to let you know what's going on. So off. Now the reality is, I might not want these to play at the same time. I might want them to play completely at different times based on cues of actors on stage or dancers or whoever you're working with. Simple solution here is we're going to go back to this keyboard watcher and we're going to change this one to S. So we double click, we turn that into S, and now I know when S is hit, it'll start. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to adjust the volume on the piece itself. So it's set at 1. I'm going to bring it down to about 0.5. So now you've got your actor on stage or whatever they may be doing. You could use this for any basic audio cueing, you know, doors or phones or whatever you want to do really. And boom, A. So someone's coming on stage in a very dramatic, wintry, place. Let's assume that's what this sounds like. And the next thing is I'm going to hit S whenever the cue is ready to happen. And now there's a banjo. Why is there a banjo in the winter? Why not? So that gives us those two scenes which are set by default to not start. Let's double check that actually works. Going back to scene two. And when I go to scene three, so there's an issue here, and the issue is that I actually have them both still active. So what I can do to stop this, I go to Visible, and I click Initialize as Off, and that's how I would use the movie player. Now here, I would go into the Audio File player, and I would click on Active, and I would initialize it as Off. Let's go back now. So now when I enter the next scene, it means that the default initialization cue is that all of these files are off. No problem. So now I want to start the banjo up. And there we go. Next, I'm going to hit A because I want to start up the wintery music. And there we go. So that's some very basic hotkey cueing, we can call it, for Isadora. So on the next thing that I'll show you how to do, I'm going to show you how you can actually use this a little bit better for giving a full kind of show functionality.